Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I'm really excited about today's guest, uh, Omar Vital. He's a motivational consultant, international speaker. He's also a a ministry leader, coach, and author. Uh, I love bringing guests such as Omar on the show to inspire, motivate, help the audience get some tidbits of wisdom. And I'm happy to welcome Omar to the show. Welcome. Thank you, doctor, for having me on. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us, you know, kind of your story, how you got started, what your business does, and we will get right into the the discussion. Well, there's a there's a lot that uh, you you just mentioned in my in my bio and (laughs) just a long list of things obviously gone on over years. But I like to keep it very simple, especially for podcasts and say, you know, (laughs) I'm just a young man from a small town in Texas with a pen in in his hand and a dream. Um, Writing is the foundation of everything I do, whether it's consulting, whether it's keynote speaking, uh, coaching, all of the different things, curriculum building. All of this starts with the fact that I'm a man who likes to sit down and get in the lab and put pen to paper. And and so everything uh, spins from that. Obviously, I'm an author as well. Um, But really, I'm just a a young man who who wants to wants to inspire people, wants to make sure and and especially help youngsters kind of level up in their life and, and, and get some purpose and get get some understanding of what it's going to take to be successful in life. And I like to kind of start on that ground floor because obviously working with the youngsters is part of the future, but I also deal with adults as well. But I like to kind of hit it from both sides from the standpoint that we're all going through some kind of season and transition in our lives. And I think the past three years have proven that we're actually going into a new season and, and different things. And I like to be on the on the front end of helping individuals be able to to do better things in their lives very powerful and it's a very motivational why and it's kind of like um you know when i mentor younger generations it's very fulfilling you know you're investing um you may not see the fruits until maybe 18 years later you know but you know making a positive difference in the younger generation uh, especially the way our world is going these days um so i love this and you're basically helping others get a leg up a grip on life using faith-based principles integrity and one important thing is sports because really i i've seen sports as really as a metaphor of life and so talk about that you know a lot of the 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 attributes because i came up i've been a sports writer since basically about 12 14 years old Uh, i've been writing for newspapers since i can pretty much since i can walk um and sports writing was always that was kind of my entry level to getting into into the business, but also getting into to writing professionally. And over time, you know, whether it was when I wrote Awaken the Baller Within or just doing my my, my sports coverage through Fox Sports, Scout.com and Rivals and different other places with the college football recruiting process, I started realizing the correlation between sports and life. You know, I wrote an entire book that was about and for football players. And then after I got done with it, I realized this book isn't about sports at all. It's spoken, it's, it's written in sports language, but it's not really about sports. Because, I mean, what, what do you need in sports? Leadership. Hmm. I think we can use that in life. Teamwork. Hmm. You have an organization. You need teamwork. <laughs> Discipline. Responsibility. Altruism. You know, respect. Um, all of those different things. A brotherhood. Right? There's, there's all of these attributes that I think pretty much every CEO can use. Every, every manager can use. And so when I say sports is a metaphor for life, meaning you can take what's on the field and use it off the field, because what I learned from writing Awaken the Baller Within is these young men were, were very talented on the field. They were getting they were having a lot of success. They all played Division One ball. A third of them went on to play in the NFL. But I've noticed <laughs> because I think only one of the close to 100 young men I interviewed for this study the only one of them is still actively playing ball, but the rest of them are successful in everything else they're doing. They're fathers. They have families. Most of them are entrepreneurs and have businesses. They're successful engineers. They have careers, right? They're doing life at a level that when we look at it and say, okay, this is the American dream. This is success, right? And it's, it's bigger than just the money. They have the family. They have the career. They have the service. They're giving back to their community. They they are faith based. All of these things are wrapped into one. And so, sports is a metaphor for life. Just puts the idea that the attributes that get you successful there are attributes that are successful for life. Yeah, 
I love that. And the one one thing is, uh, you know, kind of uh, sports and like I'm not good enough to play <laughs> professional, but um, one thing is talking about entrepreneurs is um, they always value their body. Like uh, the best entrepreneurs, they you know they work out, they eat right, they sleep, they get, they meditate, um, you drink water, and that's the, as a fundamental. Like if they're lazy in their body, then they become lazy in their business, and they become lazy in their relationships and their diet. So it's kind of like sports as this pillar, and um, kind of as a way to create discipline and and be successful. So I I love that. Um, uh, I, I know it's like kind of like I think uh, like less than one percent actually play like pro, but um, you know it's kind of like as it's a metaphor. You know you have ups and downs, and you know it's got all these good attributes. Um, so one thing that talks about is um, you are a faith based man, and um, you know which I think we need more of these days. Just not you know depending on you know we're not advocating any religion, but we're talking about faith and integrity and principles and morals. So how has faith fueled the work you currently do, your work in service in your ministry? Um, talk about how that helps you work with um, the younger generation. Oh, man, it been, it's been a total game changer for me. Um, and I've always been, you know, I've, you know, I was, I was jokingly say I was, I was baptized in the Baptist church many years ago. And my religious experience has been sort of a roller coaster, but but having faith, and especially I'll say in the last five years, because I think I think COVID woke a lot of us up uh, from the standpoint of how all of those things went down. So my faith was deepened during that time, even transition from one church to another. But it's everything to me, you know. You know, my my Lord and Savior died for my sins, and 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 I'm here to be to represent what the Word is telling me to do: serve, love, be grateful right? It's not about you. You know, this life you have is bigger than you. And so I've, I've taken that from a standpoint of service and gratitude to me is a foundational pillar for life. And just like you were talking about earlier, whether you're talking about exercise and you're talking about leadership, you talk about mindset. I, I, I've tried many other ways and I, I don't really know any other way out other than to have a strong faith in God to be able to be successful. Because I've tried the other ways and I was successful for a season and then it all came crashing down because I thought it was all about me. And then when you realize that you're here to serve, you're here to make life, uh, make life great for others. And in part, that is the seed planting in the soil and you see it bloom. Like you said, 18 years later, you'll see the fruit, some of the fruits of your labor or you may not be allowed to see it at all. But you know you're on the right path because, you know, God will reveal to you you know, the good work that is being done and knowing that that you're looking to make the world a better place. And we do need more of that. Um, society has told our young people to, you know, you know, do it on your own and, you know, don't have a church community. It's like you're your own man and woman. And that's just not true. No one lives life alone. I mean, you've seen a great deal of success in your life. And I bet you would say, you know what? I could point to about five, at least five people in your life who was like, helped you get to where you are because we're not, life is not meant to be lived alone. Life is meant to be lived in a community. And we got to get back to that. We got to get back to where, where we lean on one another and, and, and we're open and we're humble to be able to help and serve one another from the family unit all the way to community outside of there, whether it's at your church, your community center, your school, your place of employment, you need to connect with other people and allow them to, to pour into your life. And so for me, the service part of my life is the fuel that gives me the, I don't want to say the energy, but it gives me the, the, the push to do what I do professionally because I know that the service side, I know that my God-given calling over here is taken care of. And that, that fulfills me to go out and earn the, the resources I have to come take it and bring it back to the service. So this is just one gigantic beautiful uh, uh, circle of, you know, you serve first, you serve from where you are, you serve, you give from what you have, not from what you don't have. You give from what you have. People are always waiting to get more, but they never give from where they are. They never serve for what they have. They're not tithing money or tithing time. They're just trying to think about themselves. And when you say, you know what, maybe this is not about me. Let me go do some volunteer work. Let me join a church and serve uh, in different ministries. Let me go over here and, and feed the homeless. Let me go over here and work for any of the nonprofits that are out there. 
when you make that a part of your life, like a requirement, watch how life changes for you. And for me, it was a game changer. And working with the youth has so many different benefits, not only honoring my father, but it also brings me to a place to where I can pour into another generation and see how I can teach them what I didn't do when I was coming up and get them to maybe make a few less mistakes than I did. And that's very uh, fulfilling. Yeah, very, very powerfully said, uh, you know, it brings up memories, you know, in my, you know, when I was first starting out, you know, in the trenches, you know, 2008 and 2016, you know, low points. And then I, you know, feeling, ba feeling bad and sorry for myself, basically forcing myself to go to the food shelter and, and feed the homeless and hungry and volunteer my time and um, kind of give back. And it's exactly what you said. It's not about you or it's about something bigger and, you know, bigger service. So, and I love that. Um, kind of talk about this. Uh, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about your books in a little bit, but um, talking about, um, you know, working with, you know, youth and teens and uh, keep showing up on the field of life. Yeah, keep showing up on the field of life is a, is the way I was signing my books when Awaken the Baller Within came out because it, as we shared, sports is a metaphor for life. Football, baseball, basketball, whatever sport you play is a metaphor for life. So when I say keep showing up on the field of life, just like you show up for practice, you show up for the games. I want people to wake up with purpose on purpose every morning when they wake up, right? You you need you know your game plan. You know you you know your doctor. You know I'm. You know, I work in marketing, I, you know, I'm an author and a speaker or whatever. And it's like, we all have a planner. You know, we have a game plan, right? We have lesson plans. We have a to-do list. We have appointments, right? So keep showing up on the field of life, meaning don't show up. Don't go into the game without your playbook, you know, and your playbook obviously needs to, for me, I would suggest your playbook be found at, uh, foundationally in faith. Right. For me, it's the Christian faith for, for others. It can be what uh, of their choosing. But you want a faith based foundation. And then it's like, what are your goals for the day? Keep showing up on the field of life. Show up ready. Show up prepared. Right. And so when, when we when we put that out there, it, it always brings some 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 bullet points under that. It's like, how are you showing up? Are you showing up grateful? Right. Because you you can't pursue further when you don't live with a sense of gratitude mm. showing up the only way more can happen is if you're grateful for where you are and see sometimes people take grateful and and and, and, and slide in contentment no one is saying to be content but at the same time if you have two sandwiches and you want four well bless the two sandwiches and then we can work on other things but yeah. when you're just like Two's not enough. Well, <laughs> what are we doing? You get what I, and so and so keep showing up. I want people to show up and 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 be excited for life, right? I I, I work with a lot of people and they're just like, you know, a lot of times it, it, it's a season that's gone on way too long, and it's like, you know, what what is it that you want? What do you want to yeah. get out of this experience called life? And some people don't know. And and, and the beautiful thing is, is that I like to sit across from them and say. Hey, why don't we um why don't we find out where there's some wins in your life? Yeah, I understand. There's a pile of dirty clothes in your in your in your room, you know, the kitchen's on fire, the kids are screaming, one of them says they hate you, your job is bearing you down. But where's your win? Because see, if you can't find a win somewhere within life, you're going to show up defeated before the game even gets started. And, and that's where I want people to look at gratitude. I want people to look at love. I want people to look at service. It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting, Doc. I had a minister friend of mine tell me one time what he tells people to do the first time. when they Let's just say they got laid off at their job. You know the first thing he tells them to do? Go volunteer somewhere. Interesting. Like you think yeah. like, hey, get on LinkedIn, get on Indeed, <laughs> you know, go out there, get your resume tightened up. He said, the first thing you need to do, do is go volunteer somewhere. Mm. And it took me a while to sit back and take that in. I was like, hmm. And no one's saying that you don't need, still need to do the resume stuff, but it's like, go, go be altruistic. Go give. Yeah. First. Yeah. Yeah. 
I love that. Yeah, I love that. And then uh, it reminds me just, you know, it's kind of interesting, just uh, be altruistic. And just first thing is just go and give. And you're activating the law of attraction and the law of abundance. And um, you're operating from a mode of uh, abundance as opposed to scarcity. So, um, and I love this book that you talk about. You talk about um, how did the book Awaken the Baller, Shape Your Career, and kind of um, talk about how your service became a ministry and close it out with how people can contact you, follow you. You know, if you, I know you're a motivational speaker as well. So kind of tell people how they can reach you. Yeah. So Awaken the Baller Within was written at a time when I was going through very, very good highs and very, very low lows. I bought this house. I bought this house at the age of 29. So, you know, you think like that's the American dream. You know, you bought a house on your own. You're doing your thing or whatever. And I remember I was in a relationship. So, you know, you get the house and it's just like, you know, let me find someone who who can help me do this thing called life. You know, and I was in a relationship and it was going well or so I thought. (laughs) And then out of nowhere, like literally within like a week or two of me buying this house, she called me and was just like, yeah, we're done. Mm. I'm just like, hey, can we talk about it? No, nope, we're done. Is mm. there a reason? No, nope, we're done. I'm like, I believe like we could at least have a talk about this. No, nope, we're done. Hang up. And so I went into a total meltdown because mm-hmm. this was the first relationship I like taking like really serious. And so I was kind of on a really dark path and I had no way to get out of it. And I remember, you know, I'm in actually in the house that I'm the house I'm talking about where the meltdown happened. I'm still in this house right now. I'm in the office of that house. Mm-hmm. I remember being in my guest bedroom and I was sitting in the corner and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing with myself. And I remember having a conversation with God and I said, you know, God, I don't know what's going on. I have no answers. I said, I'll tell you what, though, I don't really care about life right now. However, if you wake me up tomorrow, I'll do things more your way and and and, and be on a path that's going to do some new things. And so obviously he woke me up. <laughs> And I remember because at the time I was working for Fox Sports and I was doing a lot of football recruiting work. And so I was working with athletes. But to get myself out of this hole, I I developed a spiritual, personal relationship, the different types of books, you know, all of these different things that were needed in my life. You know, reading the Bible, reading Think and Grow Rich, reading Who Moved My Cheese, all of these different books that helped me get out of this hole. And so I was like, but wait a minute. Like I have this new spiritual development and I love my faith, but I also love sports. How can I, how can I merge the two? And so waking the baller within, I wrote it in the same way. Napoleon Hill wrote, they can grow rich. I was like, can I write a manual for young, for young up and coming football players that helps them get through um, these different things in life. And so that's where it, that's where it ends up going. And so I, you know, Awakening the Baller Within was written. That would have been like 20, 2011. And, you know, it, it kind of went from there and it ended up being paid kind of the athlete's life manual. And it was just, it was good times. Um, and so it, it, it focused on dream building, goal setting, and a relentless pursuit for all of those things I just mentioned. And it just ended up kind of being the staple that kind of catapulted me into some of my other books as well. But that was, that was a foundational book and it, and it, and it did pretty well. And it actually launched my speaking career uh, as well. So, so that was a great time in my life. And I don't think I realized the impact that book made, but, you know, here we are. And, you know, I look back at that time as a, as a, as a pivotal moment in my life to be able to do some great and amazing things. And with that, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always open because I do, I'm still working in the youth ministry right now uh, in my church in the Woodlands, Texas. And so when we talk about service, I, I devote uh, hours each month, each week um, to the betterment of young men, um, young men from teenagers up to young adults. And so uh, people can reach out to me. It's amadvital.com on all the platforms. So, you know, it's just basically my name for YouTube. I mean, it doesn't matter. And in my website is a movie and like there's no aliases you won't find a whole bunch of extra things out there it really is just that um but i i have committed my life to to working with young people and specifically very very intently with young men um because of the aspect that i want to create more young men who are leaders um you know guys who you know have 
you know, doing what you're doing, do, doing whatever they do for a career. I just want them to do it to the to the max, you know, go start great families and build what built this country on. This, this country was built on families. This country was built on leaders. And I want us to get back to that because we we've lost we've lost touch with some of those things. So I've I'm committed to trying to right the ship as much as I can within this lifetime that God has given me. Yeah. Very powerfully said, and I love that. And, you know, regardless of what religion you subscribe to, we're all spiritual, but um, I feel like the moral fabric of society is really is not there anymore. And just like, you know, basic tenets of, you know, character, honesty, integrity, we need more of that. So keep the work, keep up the work that you're doing and um, all of, uh, Amar's resources will be in the links and show notes. Be sure to check out his books. They're on Amazon. I'm going to check them out as well and leave a five-star review and follow him on all his socials. He's on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, connect with him there. And with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast.